Today, we're talking about some exciting new features that were announced at Config Europe. All right, so this is gonna be a fun video going over some really cool new things that Figma is both releasing today, as well as planned releases coming up soon. So the general theme for Config Europe was addressing the natural tension that exists between designers and developers. They're doing this by updating some of their existing features to be a bit more flexible and relatable to the development world, as well as adding some new features that as designers you should be pumped for. And it will also help communicate a little bit more with developers when it comes to design system work. The first thing I wanna talk about is variants. Now, this is super exciting because it's a great way to group together related components it will help clean up the asset panel. It will also help these components be more closely related to how it was structured in the development world. Now we could do this kind of system before using the hierarchy named approach with the slashes. You know, you could name a primary button, primary button slash hover, primary button slash pressed. And then we could change components by using the asset menu and having it be usually pretty organized and uh, Figma would recommend what would be appropriate for that context. But this system simplifies that view in Figma and it also lays the groundwork for a new feature that's coming soon that I'm sure you can figure out what it might be, but I'll talk about it in a little bit. Overall, this is really exciting. It's gonna help organize our design systems better. It's gonna allow us to communicate with developers in an easier way. And I think it's gonna let us do some cool stuff of prototyping as well. All right, I teased it, but I'm sure you guys knew what I was talking about. They also announced interactive components, which is awesome. We've been asking for this for a long time, and this will allow us to use those variants to have interactive prototypes on a component level. You know, right now, if you wanted to show off a button hover state, you'd have to create several frames just so that you could animate between them showing off that state. Well, no longer coming in January, their plan is to allow us to have component interactions that don't require frame transitions. We can do it on a component level and it'd be immediately alive on any screen that those components exist on. I'm super pumped to play with this. I can't wait to see all the cool things that get made with this. It's gonna be awesome. All right, next up, auto layout is getting some love. And this is gonna be really exciting for those of us who liked creating dynamic content. Uh, auto layout, if you don't remember, was an amazing feature released back in 2019 that allowed you to create content that could dynamically respond to uh, its internal content. So it was great for buttons. Uh, it was also good for just generic layouts that weren't too complicated. But now they're releasing a really great update to auto layout. They're bringing a new clean UI to the auto layout system so it'd be easier to know what's happening and why you're doing what you're doing. It also allows us to add independent padding to sections, which is gonna be really great. It's also gonna help you just design content that developers will be able to relate to a bit more, as opposed to having to worry about uh, showing off the uh, red lines or showing the spacing between different sections. Uh, we can use that padding value and it can be referenced through the new inspection tab. It's also gonna be great because we can stretch elements along both axes so we can use that to fill up different areas. That's gonna be a huge problem solver for people who've had to deal with complex layouts with the large nested auto layout systems just to accomplish relatively simple layouts in CSS. This is an awesome and welcomed addition to auto layout, getting us even that much closer to the real thing. So really excited to play with this. I believe this launches in November. All right, along those same lines of making improvements, there is an improved user interface for swapping component instances. This is going to be really nice in case you have a design system full of component icons or different button states or anything that would be highly visual. It used to be just name based only if you wanted to change what your component was, but now we get a nice user interface that shows the preview image of the component as well as it's easily sortable and you can also reference which library you're pulling from. So this is a really nice addition to those who have larger design systems, or those who just want to build complex design systems. All right, and finally, we have some nice additions to developer handoff. The code tab has been replaced with the inspection tab. This new tab shows off the name of the selected layer. It shows off high level information not embedded in the code. 
So you get properties that developers might want information on. You get information about the topography. Uh, you get information about what's inside the component. Things that would be really helpful during this transfer stage that don't have to be referenced from the artboard. It can just be grabbed from this tab right here. The code generator is still in existence. I believe it has been moved to the design tab section. So you should see that on your main primary selection. So in case that was still used in your team, it's not going anywhere. It's just been moved. All right, well, that's all the news. I'm super excited to play with some of these new features. Unfortunately, not everything comes out at once. The features that are live right now are the inspect tab, uh, as well as the new component library search system. And then coming in November is the new auto layout. And then coming in January is the interactive components. Also coming in November uh, is the variants. So you will get the variants before you get the interactive components. That'll give you plenty of time to get all your variants set up. And then once January hits, we can all dive in and start making all of our awesome interactive components and create those really polished prototypes. I'll have videos coming out on each feature once they're released for a deep dive look. But for now, why don't you dive in, experience what they've already released, uh, and definitely go watch their live stream of the Config Europe if you weren't able to make it. I'll put the link in the description. Until next time, I'm Max.